Hey everybody, it's Wojo. Today we're going to just look at uh, how to solve with fractions. We kind of talked about this a little bit in class, but it's always good to go over. Uh, for some reason, when we add fractions to solving, uh, that could confuse some students and they get mixed up. So we're going to look at not only how to solve with fractions, uh, but some cases where students also get mixed up. So I definitely watch to the end, even if you kind of get the idea at the beginning. I'll try to go quick uh, over the stuff that you guys already know. All right, so if it says to solve, and there's an equation like this. I really don't even worry about the fraction. I'm going to just pretend it says solve 7 equals 3x minus 3. I'm not really going to think too much of the fraction. It doesn't really change how we approach the problem. Uh, there's just one step at the end that we'll do a little different. So we'll still start farthest away from the x. Uh, the 2 3rd is connected by multiplication, and the minus 3 is farthest away. So we're just going to undo the minus 3 uh, by adding 3. Uh, the nice thing on this side, negative 3 and 3 is 0, so we can kind of cancel it out. 7 plus 3 is 10, so we'll bring that down, and we're left with 2 thirds times x. Uh, because it's a multiplication of 2 thirds, we have to divide by 2 thirds. Uh, but in middle school, we talked about dividing by fractions is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal, or the flip of the fraction. We can just multiply by the flip or the reciprocal of that fraction. And what will happen is that will turn into a 1. 3 halves times 2 thirds just turns into 1. It turns into 6 over 6. And so we can kind of just say that cancels it out. And that will work every time. If we multiply a fraction, if we multiply any fraction by its reciprocal, it will turn into 1. And in that case, it kind of cancels out. Multiply a fraction by its reciprocal. And so in this one, if I do that to one side, I have to do it to the other. On this side, the 3 halves and the 2 thirds cancel out. And on the left-hand side, I have 3 halves times 10. Now, if you have a calculator like this, you can do fractions a couple different ways. You can do 3 ABC2 times 10. If you don't have a calculator like this, you could do 3 divided by 2. So the fraction, you could do 3 divided by 2, get the decimal, and then times it by 10. That would work. But I also would like you guys just to get used to doing this mentally. 3 halves times 10, there's a couple different ways you can do it. But it's 3 times 10, which is 30, and then divided by 2. So 30 divided by 2 is 15. I could also, if you don't like to do large multiplications, you can do the division first. So 10 divided by 2 is 5, then times by the 3 is 15. So there's lots of ways you can multiply it, but I would just do it by reading it. 3 times 10 is 30, divided by 2 is 15. So this would give me 15 is equal to x. And then x is all by itself. So I just want you to know if you have a fraction, we're going to multiply that fraction by its reciprocal, and then what that happens is it turns it into 1. 1x one is just x, and so we can just kind of cancel it out. It becomes real nice uh, to solve problems like that. And it even works with real simple one-step problems. So if I had something like negative 4 fifths x equals 12, I could solve that fairly quickly just by multiplying by the reciprocal. Now, I'm only going to multiply by the reciprocal when the fraction is the farthest thing away. So I didn't multiply by the reciprocal here because I still had to get rid of the minus 3. So we don't always multiply by the reciprocal or the flip first. We do it when it's its normal time to get rid of it in, in the solving process. So here, um, I would multiply by the reciprocal of negative 4 fifths. Now, the reciprocal of negative 4 fifths is a negative 5 fourths. That would allow me to uh, multiply a negative times a negative and get a positive 1, which is what I want. I just want this to be a 1x. So if I do that, these would all cancel out. It would just leave me the 1x or the x. And then I would have to multiply it on this side too. Now here's a good example where if you want to do this mentally, doing the multiplication first might not be easy. It's 12 times 5. Well, I might know that's 60. Do I know what 60 divided by 4 is? I might. But you could also do the division first. You could also do 12 divided by 4, which is 3, and then multiply by the negative 5. 
And so if it's easier for you to do the division first, 12 divided by 4 is 3 times the negative 5 is negative 15. That's a way you can do it mentally. You can always use a calculator if you want as well. So don't be afraid to grab your phone or a calculator on the Chromebook, whatever you have. But a nice easy way is to do the multiplication, then divide, or do the division, and then multiply. Either way works. Now what I really wanted to show you today is what happens when we have to distribute a fraction. Uh, most students do okay with the problems we just had above, but what if it looks something like this? What if it asked us to solve 7 thirds times the quantity x plus 2 equals 14? A lot of students would start a problem like this and distribute the 7 thirds. And that's fine, you could distribute the 7 thirds, but then you're going to have to do 7 thirds times 2, and you're going to get 14 thirds as a fraction, then you're going to have to subtract that from 14, uh, which might not be the easiest to do. Instead, we can just multiply by the reciprocal, since the 7 thirds is the farthest away from the x, since these are grouped together, this is the farthest thing away, I can get rid of it just by multiplying by the reciprocal. So the flip of 7 thirds is 3 over 7. Multiplying that side by 3 over 7, multiplying this side by 3 over 7, these would cancel out and just leave me a nice x plus 2. I don't have to worry about the fraction now. Now this might look tough, but here's a good chance for you to practice the thing I was just talking about. I think you guys could do 14 times 3 sevenths in your head. So before you grab a calculator, think about it. There's two ways you could approach this. There's probably more than two ways, but two ways that we talked about. You could do 14 times 3 in your head. A lot of people don't know what 14 times 3 is, but if you do, get that answer and divide it by 7. Or, if you're like that, that's too much, do the division first. What is 14 divided by 7? I think all of you guys could do that. 14 divided by 7 is 2 and then take that answer and multiply it by 3. So 2 times 3 is 6. So 14 times 3 sevenths is simply 6. Um, if that looks weird to you, back in middle school, you would have put the 14 over 1, and then you would have multiplied the tops and then divided out the bottom to see if you could. But we could do it this way too. We could do 14 sevenths times 3 over 1. It's the same problem. So 14 divided by 7 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6. So if you want, you can do the division first, and then, and then do the multiplication. But if you look, this looks so much easier than having to distribute the 7 thirds, because at this point now we just got to subtract the 2, and we're all set. The one thing I want to warn you about, though, is we only want to do that step uh, when... Uh, it's time to get rid of the fraction. We don't want to like do it early. So if I had something like uh, 7 thirds times x plus 2 plus 4 equals 14, I wouldn't want to multiply the reciprocal until after I got rid of the plus 4. So we have to still do it in the right order. We still have to think about what's farthest away from the x. This is closer, this is farther away, so I would subtract the 4 and then I could multiply by the reciprocal. So we still have to pay attention to order when we're doing our problem and still start farthest away. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about is just some cases where students try to apply this rule and it doesn't belong. So again, this works with fractions. If I, fractions that are bothering the x. If I just write something simple like this, x divided by 5 equals 10. Yeah, you could say that's a fraction, but it's not a fraction that's bothering the x. If I said who's bothering the x in this one, it's just a divide by 5. So we don't have to multiply by a reciprocal. I guess you can kind of think of it that way. But how do you get rid of a divide by 5? We just multiply by 5. There's no fraction that we have to worry about. We're just going to undo that division. So don't apply this rule in the wrong way. We're only going to use that reciprocal trick. Um, if we're going to get rid of a fraction, like get rid of a two-thirds, where it's just x divided by 5, we're just going to do multiplication just like normal and get our answer. So we have uh, just five problems for you to try. I will say I think three of them use the um, fraction trick. Two of them are just kind of normal problems. I just want to see if you 
Just remember how to solve those ones, so don't use the fraction trick where it doesn't belong. Again, the fraction, it's not really a trick, it's just a way to get rid of fractions so we don't actually have to divide out um, or distribute fractions across parentheses. So hopefully this helped. I didn't talk too fast, and uh, you guys have a great day, and uh, bring your questions to class. We'll definitely go over them. Talk to you guys soon.